Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial and this is the seventh in the series of Python Bytes tutorials and in this one we're going to be looking at using the Python generator. What we'll be doing here is generating this cube, we'll give it a fillet and then we'll add a texture. That's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. Right, so we've got a completely empty scene, so the first thing we need to do is grab a hold of a Python generator, and we've got one of those in. And straight away you can see that we've got a cube in the scene. Now, if we just switch to a scripting layout and open the Python editor, we can see that we've got a line of code already in there which says return c4d.base object c4d o cube. So, this is returning the cube. Well, we don't actually need the word return in this line of code. We want the rest of that line, but we don't want the return. So what I'm going to do is just leave that down here. I don't quite need it yet. The first thing I need to do is define a frame variable, and you've seen me do this a number of times if you've seen any of my other tutorials on this stuff, but it'll be frame is equal to doc dot get time dot get frame brackets doc dot get fps open close close and as I've said many times before and I'm sure if you've seen my tutorials on these things before you'll be bored with hearing this but there will be people who haven't heard it this variable allows us to get the frames from the timeline that's what it's for okay let's move on from here so we can now say if frame, that's not that's not not dame or drain frame. <laughs> learn to type is equal to zero, and then this line will come into play. What we'll be saying here, in actual fact, we'll just indent that. We can say cube is equal to c4d dot base object c4d dot o cube. Now, just to quickly, this o cube, the o is object, that's what that stands for, and it must be a capital letter. So if you put it in lowercase, it doesn't turn orange and it's not quite right. So you've got to make sure that that's a capital letter. OK, so that's fine. That's got us that far. So we, this is going to allow us to put the cube in the scene ourselves. If we just move forward one frame, the existing cube will disappear and it won't come back because we don't want the cube in there quite yet. In order to place the cube in the scene, what we need to say is doc dot insert object cube in brackets. And that will allow us to place it in the scene. So if we now execute the code, you can see that we get the cube up here, but we haven't got it in the actual scene until I move across the scene, the actual window for the, our 3D view. Now that's interesting, isn't it? But that's because there's another line of code that actually needs to be placed in there. However, having said that, let's look and see what happens when I insert this line of code. So that will be c4d dot event add open close. Now this line of code should make the cube appear here and here simultaneously without me needing to touch anything. But let's just take the cube away. In fact, we've got a second cube generated. We'll take that away. So we've got nothing in the scene. And let's just move forward one frame and then go back. And now we've got the cube. And as you could see, there was a pause and then it came in. And it was because I just, it paused until I just zipped across there. So it's still behaving in the same way. Now, I don't quite know why this is. I'm going to just try one thing before I, I start spieling on about what I think it might be. But let's just go back to our standard layout, take away this cube. And then if I just go back or forward one, one frame and then back, the same thing's still happening. I've still got to do that before it appears. That shouldn't happen. And I think it could be some kind of anomaly with Apple Silicon Macs because I've just ported over to a new MacBook Pro, which I'm very pleased with and it's great. But this is something that I've come across while playing around doing this tutorial. And I do wonder if there's some kind of anomaly going on here with Python and Apple Silicon. I don't know, um, but it's the only thing I can think of. So if anybody else has got an Apple Silicon Mac and they're having a similar problem, then please reach out, especially if you've 
not had problems like this with your old machine. I mean, I didn't with my old machine. It was it was fine. That line would literally make it so that the cube would appear here and it would appear in here simultaneously. And that's what should be happening now, but it isn't. But anyway, let's continue from here and see if we can do a little bit more work with our cube. The first thing to do is select the cube itself and we can see our parameters here. I'm going to drag the fillet in first. Just click on it, drag it into the editor there and then tab it into place. And all I need to do here is give the word cube a small letter because we're using our variable cube. And we've got here, it says primitive cube do fill it. So in other words, it's going to switch on this checkbox if we say equals true. That should switch this on and allow us to fill it our cube. And if we just zoom in a little bit on this scene so that when we reset this, what we're going to do actually is just take away these two cubes, go for one frame and back. And now we have a cube which is filleted just zoom in a little bit more and we can see where we are and you can see that it's got three subdivisions which is what the cube will have by default so we don't really want three I think I'd like five so I'm going to drag my fillet subdivision in once again give the word cube a small letter and this time it says cube sub it's it's well sub f it says sub fillet I suppose that means so that allows us to say equals five that's all we need to say there once again get rid of the cube go back or go back one frame in fact it's already put the cube there it's put it back and you can see now that it definitely has five subdivisions so that's made it just that little bit rounder so that's how you control the actual filleting and if we select the cube again we can see that we now have five subdivisions there now our fillet radius we can also drag that in. So what we'll do is drag this in. Just hit return. Our fillet radius, again, small letter on the word cube. And we'll say it's three as, as default. I think we'd like it to be a bit bigger. So I'm going to say 10. And again, get rid of our cube. And let's see what we get. And there we go. So we've got a fillet of, we've got five subdivisions I fill it and we've got a, a radius of 10 now it's it's more pronounced yeah that's about what I've, I think it should look like so that's quite nice moving on from here then I think the next thing we'll add is a fong tag because at the moment we've got a a very sort of pixelated edge on this cube we don't want the fillet to be pixelated like that so we'll add a fong tag by simply saying tag is equal to c4d it's the same protocol as before equals c4d dot base object or base tag I beg your pardon we did object this is base tag and we have to say c4d dot and this time it's capital T fong so we're going to add a fong tag and then all we need to say is cube dot insert tag brackets tag and again we'll take our cube away in fact we'll take both cubes away that have been generated get rid of those for one frame and back and now we've got a smooth a smooth fillet because the cube now has a fong tag added to it that's great so that's the next little bit of it done and now we can think about materials I have a material already set up in the material manager here. I mean, you can use any material you, you choose to. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, moving on from here, then what we need to do is say material. So we're going to define another variable. Material is equal to doc dot get materials. And it's just open close. So what this does is gather any materials that are in the material manager here into a list. That's essentially what we're doing there. The next thing to do is define another variable and this will be texture. And it will be texture is equal to C4D dot base tag as with the fong tag. And this time it will be C4D 
dot capital T texture. And this will allow us to place the texture onto the cube when we need to do that. Moving on from here, we can say texture once again. And this time it will be set the material. So set material and it will be material brackets zero close brackets. So what we're doing here then is getting the first material and we've only got one. I mean, if we had 11 materials, you could have any number between zero and 10 in there. But we've only got one material. So we're grabbing the material here and we're taking it into this texture, uh, this texture variable. OK, so we're getting the first material from our list and placing it in this variable. Ready to use and put on the cube. So the next thing to do then, moving on from here, let's see if we can actually do this. Uh, and what we'll do in order to do that, we can simply say cube and it will be dot insert tag brackets texture and that should place our material on our cube so let's remove the cube and you well, it's actually you can see the second cube has got it but let's just remove that go forward a frame and back and there it is. And you can see that it has now got its material projected onto it, but it's not correct at the moment. The projection is completely wrong. And that's the thing we need to fix. And we're going to do that next. So if we select our tag here, we've just got another cube, which we don't want. But if we select our tag, we can see that we've got a projection menu here. Now, at the moment, it's set to spherical, which is why it's wrong. But we can see that in the list here, we've got a number of items and on the, and fourth on the list is cubic. Now this is not written in stone but I know for a fact that spherical has an index value of zero so these are all controlled numerically within Python so this has a value of zero one two three so cubic is three as I say it's not set in stone you may find in some other menus that the first item on the list does not have an index value of zero is not always hard and fast. So, you know, if you do find that you're using this and you get you get a strange result, it's because you've got the wrong the wrong number as the index value. It's worth noting that. But anyway, we know that we can use three in this particular instance. So I'm going to drag projection in, drop it in there and then simply say texture at the beginning and then equal to three move the cube let's just get rid of that get rid of all of them what have we got here have i spelled something wrong or have i not put something in there correctly let's have a look does it say yeah i've got something spelled wrong oh, i see where it is there it is just do that take those two away take that away and let's see what we've got so we've got it okay so now we've got our logo projected on the cube and it looks really nice and we could leave it there we could we could say that that's all we need to do. But if we wanted to play around with the scaling of the texture, we can actually do that, too. And I'll show you it here. It isn't of any great value to us, but I'll just show you it because it's worth knowing. So if I say texture. Again, I must learn to type. And I say dot set scale. I can then say C4D dot vector because obviously scale is a vector value. And I can put just a single value in there. If I just put 50 in there, double close, that will set the, the actual logo here to 50% of its size. And let's see what happens. So we'll just select our cube. In fact, I'll remove that one. Remove th those. What have I got? Have I, got a, have I spelled something wrong again? Let's have a look. Set, yes, I have set scale. Is, um, I've typed that in wrong. That's better. Right. Get rid of these two. Oh, I've got something else wrong as well. What have we got? Let's have a look. Aha! Vector is spelled wrong. Okay. Now it's better. It should work all right now. 
yeah it's gone green again let's take that away okay great we got there in the end um and let's see what we've got yeah so now you can see that the texture is it's 50 percent of its size it doesn't look right as i said there was no great value in doing it in this particular instance but it just shows you how the, the actual scaling can be used and how it works if we get our material tag we haven't done anything in here it hasn't changed the the length of the uvs or anything like that it's just it's outside of this it's done it in a different way um, but there you go that's what we've got there and that's how we've done it uh, with the texture so that's fine it's all good it's working perfectly well okay and that just about completes this tutorial there's not really anything else i wanted to show you uh, i'll just set that back to 100 get rid of that cube again and there we go we're back to normal okay great fantastic and as i say that does just about wrap this one up so as always i hope you found this one worthwhile and that you've learned something of value and as you can see the python generator is actually quite a powerful little tool within cinema 4d it allows you to do a lot of different things actually i mean you could set up a loop in here if you wanted to and if you had say multiple textures and you wanted to generate multiple objects each with a different texture on it that would be quite easy to achieve but anyway that really does draw this one to a close so as always i really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you've learned something of value and if you have then please please give the video a like and if you haven't already then please subscribe to the channel ring the bell and of course leave a comment and wherever you happen to be on social media please please share this video because all of this good stuff helps to keep the channel moving in the right direction but anyway that's me done for now so i'll see you very soon on the next tutorial